Hi, my name is Michael Warren. I'm a math professor at University of Oregon. I'm going to talk about the security budget and Bitcoin's security model. Um, I believe it should be modeled more, more like a picture. It's not a number. It's not a, a hash rate we need to get to. It's not a, uh, a price or a, a block reward we need to get to. Um, it, it depends mostly on the slope of a curve. So I'll draw some pictures and explain what I mean. So first of all, I'll draw a, uh, a curve, which I think you should be somewhat intuitively familiar with if you're familiar with how Bitcoin works. This is a one over X curve. Um, and this is going to represent the rewards of mining um, per hash rate, or per, yeah, I guess per hash rate. We, we can do it as a rate rate. So why is this one over x? It's because it's difficulty adjusted, right? If the difficulty adjusts, if, if, if the, the number of, so on this axis we have hash rate, I should say. If the hash rate is low, if very few people are mining, your rewards are higher. If the hash rate is high, your rewards are lower. This is a difficulty adjusted. Okay, now there's another very important curve, which is going to tell you precisely where the uh, the hash rate is going to end up. This curve looks something like this. And this is going to be the marginal cost of producing hash. So, you know, the first Hashes that are produced are going to be typically the cheapest, um, the most efficient ASICs, or the cheapest electricity. Um, low cost, they're mostly almost always going to be in the profit. Um, and as, as the hash rate increases, I don't know what it is now, 300 million ter hash per second or whatever, um, as this increases, the marginal cost of adding more is going to be higher, right? So, you know, the first uh, you know, you produce 300 million terahashes per second, adding 20 million terahashes per second is going to be more expensive than the first 20 or the previous 20, right? So the slope here, you know, it represents actually as we start to go higher, all of the hashes that are available through any method possible. Like up here somewhere we have um, me hashing with my iPhone or something like that, right? It's very expensive, it's not very efficient, um, it's not going to be profitable unless Bitcoin is, is astronomically ex, uh, expensive. So you actually are going to get some sort of an asymptote here, and this is going to represent the maximum value of all the hashes if everybody was hashing all their electronic devices and pencil and paper and everything. In the near future, like in the next week or two or the next two months, there is a maximum number that we can produce. Like we, we, we can't go beyond that without creating a bunch of new ASICs. If we create ASICs, we're actually going to move this curve kind of off to the right. But for a short period of time, typically the curve is going to be fixed looking like this with some sort of maximum. Okay, so as you can see, there's this, there's this point here. This is the point where the marginal cost of producing hash is going to exceed the marginal revenue. You add more hash, you go up this level, you, you also drive the difficulty up, um, drives the revenue down. So what we have here is all of these miners here that are producing this hash rate are making profit. And the profit is going to be given by this delta here. This is the reward they're getting, this is the cost they're getting, this amount is a profit. These miners, this miner is indifferent. Everybody who's passed this, people with old ASICs, people with expensive electricity, people with 386s, um, they're gonna be over here, they're, they're going to be not mining typically, right? So the important thing to look at here is you have all this hash rate which is profitable, and then you have this hash rate here which is not profitable and it's expensive and it's hard to, it's hard to get to and uh, 
there's also going to be a small amount of it, right? So even, you know, if I've drawn this picture, I don't know how correct this is, but let's just say this is like, I don't know, 85% of the available hash rate in the world right now might be profitable for Bitcoin mining. Now, that's a very secure situation because it means that in order for someone to come and attack the network, um, they might be able to acquire some of this, you know, 5 or 10% and they can go, you know, acquire from, for some, some heavy cost. But they also, in addition to that, they need to go over here and they need to convince a large portion of profitable miners to help them attack the network. Now, I think this is a main security assumption in Bitcoin um, that most profitable miners, if they're making healthy profit, are not going to participate in an attack. Right? I, and I, I think this is, this is a pretty good assumption. Um, and it, this is the assumption that people are making when they say it's impossible to attack the network. Um, it's never impossible to attack the network because you know I could go, if I had enough guns, I could hold enough guns to all these miners' heads and, and, and tell them to attack the network. It's theoretically possible, but it's very, very unlikely that you're going to convince a large portion of profitable miners to go and attack the network, right? So this is a, this is a secure picture. You have a very small amount of hash rate, which is obtainable for expensive amount, and then everything else you have to convince miners to uh, abandon their profitable hashing. Okay. What's the important thing that we see about this? Very important thing here is a slope, right? So the slope of this curve here, as we get more towards the right, it's gonna be sloping up, right? This means that even if we were to say drop the Bitcoin price a little bit, um, you know, if we drop the Bitcoin price by 10%, it means this curve um, is gonna be moving downward by 10%. Um, you're going to be coming over here. You're only going to be losing a very small amount of hash rate. You're only going to be changing um, a very small amount of hash rate to non-profitable, from profitable to profitable. So this is a, you know, a small drop in price, or say even a 10% drop in price, only flips a very small percentage of the hash rate to profitable. Right? So... Small drop in price, you still have the large majority of the hash rate is profitable, and you've only added a little bit to this, this um, ammunition for attack. Even a halving, right, you, you, you cut this curve in half. Um, if this slope is steep, you're still only losing a little bit of hash rate, and you're only adding a little bit to the, the potential attacker's arsenal, right? So as long as this, this slope is steep, you're good. Now notice there is not a number here. I mean, this isn't like, this is kind of a unit-free picture. Um, I mean, it, it will have units, but in reality, but, but this is just some sort of dollar number, and this is you know, dollar per time, and this is some hash rate per time. This could be massively expanded to, to trillions and trillions of, of, of uh, terahashes per second. Um, the important thing is that the slope does not become too, too uh, flat. So here, here's the bad picture. This is a good picture, and I think this is the way things are now. Um, this is why or, it, it, things have been this way over the last probably 10 years. This is why Bitcoin's not been attacked. That's why it's not going to be attacked in the near future. But here's the concern, the long-term security budget FUD, is that there could be a time in the future when more ASICs are produced, um, miners become more efficient with more ASICs, and so instead you get this sort of long sloping curve, much more ASICs are, are out there, and you know, so that the maximum is way over there now. Um, and then let's say that, you know, the, this, we've had these curves that we're cutting in half and the price is not going up, and then somehow we're here, right? So now look at this picture. So this is this is this is, this is the uh, the scary picture, right? Um, the hash rate, the, the block reward. If I have a very flat slope here, all these this is a really competitive miners are really competitive. They're just fighting. They're 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 fighting to stay profitable. You have this very narrow margin of profitability, and worse, 
This portion here only represents a smaller fraction of the achievable hash rate. Like, so there's, there's some point up, you know, up here where you're talking about like iPhones and, and things that, that don't, that would never make sense to hash. But if you have a bunch of ASICs that are you know, maybe slightly out of date, uh, you could be talking about hashing for a little bit more expensive. You know, this is all um, non-profitable hashing. You might be able, an attacker, if they were sufficiently motivated, might be able to now obtain this. And if this hash rate is bigger than this hash rate, you don't have to convince any profitable miners to join your, in, in your attack. You only have to convince non-profitable miners to help you attack. And that should be, in theory, more just a question of, of, of money, right? You have all these warehouses full of ASICs, which are not being used. You say, can I pay you money for these? People say, sure. These people know they're making money. They have a business. It's working. Um, these folks, yeah, please take them off my hands, right?